Welcome back, you all, to another great week of content. I did go live this morning, but this is uh, the official start um, of the week because it's the late night show, which is the you know the prime time show. Uh, my name is Dr. Kojo. I'm checking in live from sunny Los Angeles, California. Uh, and before we get into the topic, I want you all to go ahead and um, let me know where y'all are checking in from so we can get into it. Paige says she's super excited to finally catch up. Paige, you got me. You got me. Let, let, let's rock. Marias is looking forward to this one. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. We have love from Virginia. All right. South Carolina in the house. Los Angeles in the house. Nebraska, Texas, Indies. Uh, I'm having an amazing day. Thank you for asking. Utah in the house. My man Jordan just got a very toxic relationship. I'm happy you got out. Happy you got out. Colorado in the house. Ohio, Oregon, Texas. Burke, Pennsylvania. Tennessee in the house. Shout out to my Tennessee people. Uh, okay. Hey, DMP. <laughs> hey, Dr. Turex, how you doing? Checking in from Atlanta, Georgia. Moultrie, Cumberland, Virginia, New York, Minnesota, Texas. Hey, big love for Texas. I love my people in Texas. Uh, Calgary, big love for my Canadians as well. So people all over. All right, y'all. So we're going to be talking about sex today. So, um, you know, I've had a lot of DMs about, uh, you know, how ADHD can affect your sex life and, you know, vice versa. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've looked at the evidence and there's a couple of things that I want to point out uh, when it comes to ADHD and, you know, when we talk about sex, right? And the first thing that I want to start off by saying is that ADHD affects all parts of your life, right? It will affect your relationships. It can affect, um, you know, your life at work, your life at school, um, and your interpersonal relationships, right? And then your relationships with anybody. And it can also affect how you feel about yourself, your mood, your self-esteem, your confidence. Uh, and it most definitely does affect um, your sex uh, life. Uh, or it can. I don't say it, it, it always does, but it can um, affect your sex life. And I want to start off by talking about this study, you know, that was in Syracuse University uh, and what was found. You know, uh, I'm not shocked uh, by this, you know, knowing how ADHD works. Uh, but I want to go ahead and, you know, get into it. So this is a study done uh, from researchers at Syracuse University. I think Syracuse is in New York, right? Um, I think. I could be wrong. And uh, they conducted a secondary data analysis, the National College Health Assessment, and they asked sexually active undergraduate students uh, to report on their sexual activity, right? And uh, they used... To, to get to the point of it, what they found is that students with ADHD, um, this is actually very interesting. They uh, ooh, highlighted it somewhere here. Ah, oh, perfect, right here, right here, right here. This this is what we want to get to. This is this 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 is why we're all here. Um, you know, the people from Syracuse University found in their study the results results. <laughs> Or I say it like that. Results show that college students with ADHD reported more past year sexual partners, number one, lower rates of condom use, and higher rates of condom less sex while drinking, thus significantly raising the risk among students with ADHD for STI diagnoses, unplanned pregnancy, and emergency contraception use. Uh, that that's pretty much in line with how uh, I would have imagined the say to, to have gone, right? Saying that college students are, you know, likely to not use condoms, um, and especially when they're not, when they're drinking, uh, and also, you know, higher risk of sexually transmitted infections, unplanned pregnancy, and emergency contraception use. I would imagine that they're talking about plan B um, there. So now, the question is why? Why does this happen like this, right? You're probably wondering why. What is it about ADHD that lends itself to people having a higher number of sexual partners, and you know, not using protection, and, and having potential unplanned pregnancies, and also potential sexually transmitted infections? What is it about ADHD? And before I talk, because I, I know what I want to say, 
I do want to get into the comments and see what people's perspective is on this. Brandon saying, so basically we're high risk over uh, high risk sexual. Uh, you could be. I don't want to say that ADHD is good. Just because you have ADHD does not mean that you'll be like this. But there's a chance that a good amount of people with ADHD may struggle with things like this. Christy, I do appreciate you. Man, thank you so much. Uh, Tay, thank you so much. Baby says communication. You have to be straight about it as possible. What are you talking about? I'm not sure. Um, let me get people's feedback. Dopamine, uh, yeah, dopamine rush, you know, because there's some type of thrill that comes with, you know, to be honest, there's a thrill that comes with sleeping with somebody you never slept with before, right? The curiosity, you don't know the person. Are you going to like them? Are you not going to like them? You know, and sometimes with ADHD, you see these dopamine seeking behaviors, right? Uh, and as we know, if we just blindly like follow the dopamine, that's not going to be in our best um, interest, right? Because we have to, you know, things need to be premeditated. We have to think things through, right? Nothing is wrong with unprotected sex, right? But like you want to have at least kind of plan for it, you know, kind of know, you know, what that person is doing, what you're doing. Um, you're right. Like Griffin is saying, uh, it's the risk taking. Um, and I don't want people to think that if you have ADHD, you're, you're, you're doomed and you're going to have unplanned pregnancy or you're going to make poor sexual choices. No, the key is to minimize the risk, right? You still may be who you are, but the key is to minimize the risk just a little bit, right? Um, and uh, Rainy says, condom use, I would say, out of sight, out of mind. So Rainy Day, I don't think this is just an ADHD thing, uh, but it does have something to do with impulsivity. You know, but a lot of times, uh, you know, it's going to be very awkward, right? If we're all speaking as adults, it could be awkward if, you know, you, you are about to engage, you know, in a Mickey Ficky with another consenting adult, right? Um, and then you look for, you know, the protection. You can't find it anywhere. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Uh, um, Tan says, Angie, get bored drinking and forget those are my thoughts. Okay, respect. Um, dopamine, seeing dopamine for sexual activity makes perfect sense. And yeah, so for me, this makes perfect sense, right? And you have to understand that with ADHD, some people call it superpower, right? I don't know if I would agree that it's a superpower, but there's parts of ADHD that can be beneficial to you and you can use it to, you know, take you to the next step in life. Uh, but we do have to minimize risk, right? So I tell people all the time, some of the college students, like, have fun, do your thing, you know, ADHD or not. But if, a lit look like if you're just living your life and you're chasing the dopamine if there's a little bit of restraint or if that's there's a voice in the back of your head that's like um i think not that you shouldn't do it right do what you want but the voice in your head that's like uh before i do this let me make sure that i have my ducks in the row let me make sure that i'm you know that i'm i i know everything i need to know about this person right or i I'm, I'm ready to do this you may not want you know, to act, you may not have wanted to have done that with that person, but because you're working so fast, you're like, all right, this person, they're attractive. I'm going to do this, right? Boom, boom, boom. And you don't get a chance to really, like, breathe, gather your thoughts, figure out, do I, do I really like this person? Do I want to do this or not? I always say that people should do things that they want to do, right? Um, let me see. The little voice is a risk, right? <laughs> Catherine, I, I completely agree. That little voice is like, do we really want to do this? How long have we known this person? Um, and, and sometimes, you know, like for those of us who work in healthcare, we know that anybody can have any type of sexually transmitted infection. And you can't look at somebody and be like, mm, I think they're good. You can't really do that, right? We don't know. Uh, so sometimes, you know, that little voice in your head is like, we may not this might not be the smartest thing, right? And then you have another voice that's saying, oh, well, they look fine. I should be fine. Or they don't look like, you know, they're talking to anybody else, right? But sometimes there's a simple conversation, right? Because we've done, you know, lives on this channel about uh, polyamory, right? And ADHD and alternative relationships. So sometimes just a simple conversation could save you. You talk to the person and say, hey, are you like doing anything with anybody else? Are you like wearing protection or like, or what's going on? And and they may say, yeah, I'm doing so and so with someone 
somebody, but I'm taking care of myself or, you know, whatever the case is, but at least you have more information. Uh, you can make a, a better informed decision that way, right? Not to say that, you know, it absolves you of, you know, STDs or whatever, but you can make a better decision um, for yourself. I mean, it's, it's like playing roulette with your health, though. And yes, but at the same time, you have to understand that, you know, for those with ADHD, like you're moving so fast that you don't give yourself time to think, you know, and more than likely, because we know that ADHD is neurodevelopmental, right? We know that you, you've probably been this way your whole life, right? But, you know, when you're a child, you're not engaging in these types of activities, right? Hopefully. Uh, so when you're a child, you're, you know, you're being impulsive with taking somebody's toys or, you know, like things that, ch you know, things that children would engage in, you know, and then they have consequences for those things. But uh, as you become an adult, the things that we engage in are different and there's different kinds. The stakes are much higher. The stakes are much higher. So there's gotta be, there's gotta be a little careful, right? Let me, um, uh, Daniel says, I'm the weirdo trying to analyze if the other person is actually enjoying themselves or faking it and forget to <laughs> fake it or forget. Uh, well, hey, respect. If, if you're trying to, you know, people can fake things, right? You can fake interest, you know, you can fake orgasms, but hey, I mean, I, I respect it here. I respect it here. Stephine says, since I'm a Christian and I believe sex is for marriage, I always jump right into marriage before really getting to know the men that God, the last one is a keeper going nine years. Well, Stephine, um, congratulations on you know being married for almost a decade. And this is nothing that we don't talk about because you know, for my Christians out there, you know, and I'm a Christian as well. Uh, you know, you, the that the idea is no sex before marriage, right? Um, not everybody, <laughs> the majority of us are not able to do that, but the idea is no sex before marriage. But sometimes you see that the other way where like somebody might not engage in sex, premarital sex, but, you know, if they're impulsive, you you might hop into a marriage, you know, and not that you're married somebody to have sex with them, but in the back of your head, you're like, all right, once I'm married, then I can have sex without guilt and shame, but you may have, like, gone too fast and, like, married the wrong person. Uh, but I'm happy that you found somebody who uh, works for you here. You know, that, that makes me feel good. Um, let me get to some more uh, comments. I have the opposite problem. I'm too hard on myself and hyper focus on what others think too much. Unless I'm seriously emotionally connected with someone, I don't even think about this. It becomes a problem at times. So, Chelsea, this is your experience, right? So, we have to validate your experience. So, this is another end of the spectrum, right? Where you're not even thinking about sex, right? Which is, you know, like the opposite of like hypersexuality and impulsivity. And you're saying that it's a problem for you. So, I think there's that battle of trying to figure out like what's what's normal for you like what's the balance right you don't want to have too much of a drive or you don't want to have too low of a drive because that's sweet spot that everybody has to find right and um jessica says i really love to meet those who waited on having sex and who married it I, I jessica that would be an interesting poll too i don't know, I don't know if i'm the, the person who's uh equipped to have that poll right uh but it'd be interesting you know for, for research purposes right <laughs> I've been married three times. I'm really good at getting married. I'm not good at staying there. I want too much. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, I don't think when a marriage is all, I don't think it's just one person's fault, right? You know? Ella, nice, nice to see you. Uh, uh, oh, from my, from TikTok. What's up? How are you doing? All right. Let me see. Uh, as consent, Brett, I, I agree, you know? And sometimes people... Like this study that was done by people at Syracuse University, it's not, I don't think that they came up with a study to like, you know, put a stigma on people with ADHD. It's more so to say, hey, you know, people with ADHD have been shown to possibly do this, right? So just put a couple of safeguards in place and then, you know, to still have your fun. The idea is not to tell people to not have fun, like enjoy responsibly, but just, you know, at least if you can plan for it, right? It doesn't make it as fun if you plan for it, but sometimes if you plan for it, you may decide that I don't like this person, right? Or I don't want to do this, right? You know, or, or I don't want to go drinking tonight, or whatever the case may be. Um, is there any studies? Uh, Sam, yeah, there's tons of studies. In fact, I had like, you know, 12 tabs open and I canceled them so I could focus on this one uh, study right here. But 
there is, in my opinion, there's uh, pretty strong evidence um, between ADHD and um, the likelihood of sex sexual dysfunction, right? Where there's hypersexuality or hypo, you know, sexual se sexuality where you don't have as much of a desire. Brett says, I waited on my first marriage a year and a half, worst mistake of my life. You weren't sexually compatible. Uh, I've seen many people say this, not just men, um, you know, so I'm not saying that somebody's right and somebody's wrong, but I've seen many people say this. Um, Leah, I'm diagnosed with ADHD Medicaid. I often find it hard to have an, I, I think you, you meant orgasm instead of orgasm, orgasm. Is that normal? All right, so here's the thing. You know, a lot of medications can, you know, alter your sex drive, either, you know, boost it or decrease it. Um, and I don't think I'm the most qualified person to ask this question. Let me just start off with that. But, you know, sometimes with the female orgasm, it's some people struggle to achieve orgasm. And I don't want to say that's like an ADHD thing, right? Like we have ADHD, we know what the side symptoms are, the criteria, and we know what you can see like along with ADHD, right? The comorbidities. But I don't want to say that having a hard time, you know, orgasm is an ADHD thing. I, I wouldn't attribute it to that. Uh, but I'll just go out and say, I don't think I'm the most qualified to answer this question. Uh, but I like when y'all ask, ask questions and I don't have an answer because I'm like, hmm, I wonder what the answer is too. Like, I'm, I'm just as curious. Yeah. I'm just as curious. Um, please answer this. Ah, uh, you're talking about the, uh, the orgasm and um, ADHD. It could, it could be related, right? But I don't have enough evidence to say that oh, people with ADHD or women with ADHD have a hard time, you know, orgasm, right? I, I can't say that straight up. Um, but someone's saying me too, right? So, you know, it might be a shared experience. Um, Leisha, I appreciate the fact that you're able to um, uh, come on, you know. I married my husband of four years after a few, well, Christy worked out for you. Sometimes that, that works out for people, but I think across the board, um, it might not work out for everybody, right? Means them after four weeks and saying, all right, this this is my person, you know? Um, is it common for people who have ADHD to lose your sex drive or is this more of a sign of depression? So Melissa, very good question, by the way, really good question. And I think like with the article that I saw about ADHD and sexual dysfunction, a lot of times people think of it having to go like in a certain way, like no sex drive or super high sex drive, right? But I don't think that it goes like a certain way all the time, right? And same thing with depression, right? So a lot of times with depression, we see like a loss of sex drive. At least for me, clinically, that's what I've seen, um, like a loss of sex drive. But I've also had some patients who are depressed and they told me that they were hypersexual. Right. So I can't, you know, if they tell me that, oh, I'm depressed and um, that's when I start to be more like, you know, sexual, I can't say, oh, well, I read here in this book, like by the DSM-5, or I read that it has to present this way, right? Maybe that's their experience, right? So um, when you say, is it common to lose your sex drive with depression? I don't know. Or, or with ADHD, I don't know if it's common, but it could be likely. You know, and I'm picking the way I answer these questions. I'm picking my words carefully because I, I don't want to draw like a super strong correlation between two things, you know, uh, in a certain direction without, you know, being sure about the evidence. All right. Um, how do you get out of your own head and focus on sex with your partner? So, I mean, they have, there's all kinds of therapists, like there's sex therapists out there as well who can help out, help with this. Uh, but if this is like related to your ADHD, uh, which it could, it could be, then, you know, that's a good time to go talk to your provider. Um, sometimes maybe it's a lack of focus. Maybe having the proper medications helps out with this, right? Uh, or maybe getting more sleep at night, right? We know that, or, or I, I have to educate you on make a video about this, but, um, you know, there's certain things that make uh, your ADHD worse. In fact, that's a video I'm, I'm going to, Put out that doesn't make ADHD worse, but it makes it hard to cope with your ADHD symptoms, right? Lack of sleep is one. Uh, um, uh, another one is uh, isolating yourself, right? 
but maybe if you're not getting enough sleep, you're having a hard time focusing, right? So uh, obviously you got to get to the bottom of, of that. Um, got to get to the bottom of what's going on exactly. Uh, I can, well, well Stephanie, the, okay. So, so people have different experiences, you know. Let me get some of these comments right here. And Brett says, good to know my suspicions were true and I'm far from alone in the struggle. So Brett, this is what I do like about this study right here, you know, the information that we got from Syracuse University, because I think if, let's say you have ADHD, right? And you, you know, you made some decisions that were kind of impulsive and maybe you got somebody pregnant or you became pregnant or you, you caught a sexually transmitted infection or something that came from like lack of like following through with like the proper process, right? Like you were just kind of impulsive and you hopped into it. Sometimes you can have shame and feel like, oh, I'm the only person, um, you know, in the world who's going through this. Or like, you'll think that nobody else is struggling with this and that you're some person who is super weird. But uh, that's that's another benefit to having this information here because you put it out there and people can feel less alone, right? And then once you feel less alone, you're like, okay, well, this is why this is happening, right? And then you don't just look at yourself like, oh, I'm just like a horn bug or whatever the term people would say. Like you can say, oh, I have this condition, you know, it's a mental illness. And because of it, I'm more likely to do X, Y, and Z. So now that I know, I'm going to take the proper steps and I'm just going to do better. You know, you don't have to like crucify yourself or beat yourself up. You just know better now so you can do better for yourself. All right. Brandy, yeah. I saw a lot of questions about this. I was like, all right, today's the day that, that we talk about it. Uh, <laughs> Mickey, Mickey. Oh, uh, man. Um, I love, I have this issue personally. And, right. And, and Katie, I think once you know, then you can do better for yourself, right? You know, because you, you have to remove the shame that's attached to it. And then, you know, you can feel like a human again. Because shame has a funny way of making you feel like, like you're less than, right? Uh, I find that guilt from past impulsive, risky sexual experiences keep me from enjoying vulnerable romantic sex now that I'm mature to management. Oh, so uh, Catherine, like you always leave some in-depth like comments and I really like this, like the guilt from the past, like let's talk about that, right? The guilt can really like kind of like paralyze you in a sense because I do believe that there's a difference between like uh, enjoying a vulnerable romantic sex, right? Um, you know, whatever that is for you, th there's a difference between that and like an impulsive decision, right? Like you just like went so fast and you're like, oh, you know, like it was impulsive, like you you didn't know before you realized what was going on, like you had already done whatever you did, right? So I think sometimes the guilt can hold you back from en enjoying, you know, like uh, vulnerable romantic sex in the future. So. I'm actually happy that you mentioned that. You know, that's why it's good to normalize this because if you're still having guilt, or uh, I mean, sometimes things pop up here and there. But if like you're having guilt and regrets and shame about something that happened in the past, and it really sticks with you, it can have a way of like the same way that anxiety robs you of the present. The past can also rob you of the present, right? So you're trying to like hold off the anxiety. You try to hold off like past trauma and like enjoy the present moment. So um, thank you for sharing. Really, really good, um, really, really good uh, uh, comment. Does ADHD medication negatively impact or decrease your sex drive? Really, really, really good question right here from John. Uh, in my opinion, um, at least from like giving it to patients, I've seen patients like see patients who've been able to focus and they're so zoned in into what they're doing that they're not worried about sex. And I've seen patients who said they feel like they're more hypersexual on the medications, right? So it definitely does depend, um, you know. Let me see. Nice little mellow and the guilt is correct. Right, right. That, that's the worst thing about guilt. Like, it'll make you feel like, like you're the only person who did that in the world, right? And obviously, we know that it wasn't you. You know, that you weren't the only person. The guilt will have a funny way of doing that to you. All right. Um... I would have considered myself asexual for many years because I was constantly stuck in my head and I got to the point where I could have gone my entire life without sex, but it wasn't fair to my husband or something I had to work on. Right, and, and this could be tied to mental condition or it might not be tied to it, but I think that's where it's important to communicate because some people are, are like not that big 
to not a big deal to me. And then if the other person sees sex as a big deal, then clearly like there's gonna be an issue there. But at least understanding where people are coming from can make things easier for both people. Right. Um good day turning day. <laughs> right, the Vicky Vicky. Uh my boyfriend and I are both in the spectrum for autism and we both have high ADHD and have issues when it comes to birth. We can identify low, we're both comfortable. Well, I think the fact that you know a common denominator here is the fact that you all both struggle, you know, so uh it theoretically like it would be easier to be empathetic towards the other person, right? And if that's a safe space for y'all, y'all can kind of work through the issues. Um Nay, Nay, what's going on? How you doing? Being single and self-respecting, I find that talking to myself before a sexual endeavor helps me to make better decisions. I have to first determine my own intent uh, because overthinking can be an issue after, if not. Right, and I, I think that's a that's not a bad rule to have like with, with life in general, right? Do I want to have sex with this person? Let me think about it. Let me, let me really make sure. Do I want to take this job? I like my current job, but the other job might pay me more or the other job might be easier. Let me think about this job before I do it. Do I want to go on vacation? Let me think about do I want to go on vacation because it might be expensive. I don't want to come home and be broke. Right. Like this thinking about certain things before you do it, um, it can it can be helpful. Uh I understand that feeling. I feel guilty for jumping into marriages with my exes before really getting to know them. All right. And I, I think one thing with um with with ADHD, but also with mental health in general, uh you know, impulsivity, right? Whether you're impulsive because you have a mood disorder like bipolar or you're impulsive because of ADHD or impulsive because of borderline or j just maybe you have no condition, but you j you've made impulsive decisions from time to time. I think everybody's able to like have empathy for the other person and not judge, right? Like this, at least this space right here is like a non-judgmental space, but um, like in the real world, you go out there and there's judgment, but like within the world, there are people who have their own struggles and they're like, you know what, like what you did, maybe like it wasn't in your own best interest, but you have to give yourself, you know, credit for trying to move past that. Um, I'm still hypersexual, but I've done a lot of healing my work. My partner's having a hard time keeping up though. And now I'm getting depressed because I'm not getting my needs met, but I only want, right. So when only one, when only one person wants a certain thing uh, in any type of relationship or agreement or, you know, collaboration uh there's gonna be an issue there right so trying to meet the other person halfway um and it can be difficult right if somebody's like i don't want to have sex another person's like i'm gonna have it all the time there's gonna be issues there like, clearly right um but finding a way to compromise or at least opening yourselves up to you know trying to see the other person's perspective and meeting the other person halfway um, i think that the answer lies somewhere in between like if this is clear and the other person the answer lies somewhere um in the middle yeah let's become a cougar <laughs> what, what, what are we talking about i must have skipped the chapter what's up jeffrey says single here i don't enjoy sex my brain wanders and i get self-conscious it's quite i'll have to grab because uh and, and now now if you don't legitimately enjoy some people just don't enjoy certain things like sex and they're fine with it and that's fine um but if you don't enjoy it but you wish that you were enjoying more. I think that's you know the perfect time to check in, you know, with your your local provider, your doctor, and, and just see like, you know, things could be leading to like a loss of drive, you know. Like you said, the um, you know, feeling self-conscious. Then maybe therapy gets you back, you know, into you know, shape, you know, to do whatever you want to do. Or, you know, depression can look like a little sex drive, a lot of different things, right? Um I feel like I never realized this. I'm impulsive from BPD and constantly over overthink. You can't enjoy it. Well, you know, when I do the live about meditation, make sure you join so we can bring you to the the present. Uh, yeah, I thought about cougars are weak. Um, sometimes falling in love is more fun than being in love. The fossils are the good job. Ooh, nay. Yeah, you would love. I love the show there. Uh, and I think this right here is something that, you know, a lot of people can take, take notes from, right? Like the, you know, whether you're on the side of being like actually in love is better or like the falling love part 
it doesn't have to be this versus that. I think we can all agree that like the falling in love part is extremely intoxicating, right? That part is like it's all consuming. Like all of a sudden, like your ambitions, all that stuff doesn't matter. I mean, you're still gonna like chase after what you want to chase, but you know, you're thinking about this one person all the time, and like that's everything to you in the world, and like you're in love, and like you know, like that all consuming feeling right there. Um, sometimes it can be more fun than being in love. And I think that like actual, like, like in love, like genuine love is much more calm. It's not as like rapid and boom, 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 you know, but yeah, definitely. I love the show for you right there. Um, same. I can go. Your love. <laughs> Months. Yeah. And, and, Look, for some people, sex is not a big of a, a need, right? So I think also this is another thing to talk about before, like, you get married, right? I think if you're with somebody and you will have, like, medium to low drives, that's fine. Like, there's more of life than sex, right? And if you're with somebody who has a high drive and you have a high drive, that's fine, right? Uh, but when when there's imbalance somewhere, like, a lot of times you might run into uh, an issue, and uh, uh, my boyfriend's hypersexual and it's had an effect on our relationship. I can't trust him. He seeks the thrills online by talking to other women. I love him and he said he loves me. I'm trying so hard, but I truly don't know what to do to help him. He's the reason I follow you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So Holly, you follow me because of, okay, well, I guess you put me in the spot, Holly. You put me in the spot. What I would tell you is uh, like, if you, if you have to follow me, right, a stranger online, uh, I, I think I'm giving that a good tip, so if you have to follow me for him, then that shows that you care, right? It shows that you want this thing to work, so give yourself credit for that. Um, you're doing a good job, right? Just You're attempting to see things from his perspective, even though you don't get why he seeks these thrills, right? And I think it's about having that conversation, you know, and asking, like, what do you truly want, or, like, how are you truly feeling? Uh, and it's sometimes embarrassing to really open up about how you feel, because as we were talking about earlier in this live, if you feel like you're the only one who's going through this type of issue, then why would you speak up, right? Because in your head, you're like, only I go through this. I don't think anybody else is going through this, right? So as we create more of a safe space for people to talk about these things, then you know people won't feel as ashamed, you know? And maybe when you talk to him, maybe it's attention that he wants. It might not be the sex, maybe it's the attention, you know? So you might get to the, the root of the issue um, without him having to feel like he needs to step out or whatever. Uh, so good communication can, and look, you can't control another person, Holly, but I think just having good intent, which you already do and communicating uh, and then hoping for the best. You know, I think that right there should set you up pretty good, but I do appreciate the attention. Um, and I hope that this content is helpful. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy that I decided to talk about this online today, if it's going to help you, uh, in your relationship, you know, but I'm always thinking of ways to put this stuff in the reels because I know some of y'all enjoy the show and y'all come every night and watch, um, but the reels reach more people, right? So sometimes if I can put it in like a, a, a short reel video, I can reach more people, but the live audience is growing, so I do appreciate that. And you know, people will be able to see things because uh, you can always catch the playback, right? Um, he wants to be poly and have other partners, but I don't want all the complications that come with, with other relationships. Plus, if you're sleeping with other people, um, you could be sleeping with me. Uh, well, Claire, I don't think he sees, um, I don't think he sees it like that, you know, because in your mind, you're like, if you're gonna, you know, sleep with somebody, sleep with me, and he's like, I want to do with other people. Um, but I, I think. It, so take any monogamous relationship, right? So Claire, if he feels, if he wants, if he voices a desire to have open up the relationship, right? There's nothing wrong with him voicing that desire. But if you say no, and you haven't come to a, a conclusion, then you know, y'all, it'd be best to chill out, keep doing the monogamous thing for now until both people are on the same page, right? Uh, but you definitely don't want him to like take matters into his own hands and say, you know, I'm going to do whatever I want. Uh, but both people have to be in agreement, you know. And like I, I know that much about like a poly uh, amorous relationship. Um, 
Um, Andy Mack is important. My fiance and I are okay. Speaking of Pollyanna's relationship, and there are a lot of struggles. He's on the spectrum, and we both have ADHD. Communicating is huge. Your partner won't know unless you tell them. So, Brittany, I like that last line right there, where it says, "Your partner won't know unless you tell them." <laughs> That's important because you you have to communicate because people people aren't mind readers, right? I wish you know we were sometimes, not all the times. I don't want to read everybody's mind. But sometimes, like, it'd be nice to know what somebody's thinking of. But because, you know, to my knowledge right now, we don't have that ability. You have to communicate, right? Um, and even this is for our relationships, poly, uh, you know, when, any type of relationship, even with your boss at work. Once the communication stops, uh, it's not going to be a fun relationship, you know. And even out here in L.A., I'm working with all these different people to get products bring parties to life right and when i'm talking to somebody and they're not communicating with me i'm like oh this long-term partnership might not work because i don't know if you're gonna get this video in on time or blah 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 so in any relationship you definitely have to uh you, you don't have to but it'll be wise to communicate um Stephanie says i mean <laughs> I made my boyfriend follow you because he finds it easier to see it from a third party more uh, elegantly. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, Stephanie, sometimes it is easier when it comes from a third party because if y'all have been going back and forth and he's saying, I feel this way, and you say, I feel this way, sometimes you do need a third party to come in and say, hey, like, these are the facts, this is the evidence, you know, watch out for this, watch out for that. Um, it could make things a little um, helpful. I think I'm demisexual needs to be emotionally good person. Respect, you know, and then hopefully find somebody who feels in that same exact way, Kayla. And, um, ooh, oh, Brett, let me get right back to this. Adriana, I answer questions on YouTube, but I just have to see it. Sometimes the comments come in so fast. So sometimes, like, for example, Brett, I've answered like two or three of Brett's questions because they just happen to pop up like right there. Um, uh, Brett says, Y'all ever end a relationship and then a few weeks or months later regret it and want them back or even <laughs> so I've definitely done this before, Brett. Um, I've done this multiple occasions where you know you break up and I'm like, I'm good. And on like a random Tuesday morning, I'm like, I wonder what she's doing. I wonder if she's thinking about me. I know she's thinking about me. I hope she's thinking about me, you know? And then you get to the whole thing where you you scroll on the social media and like <laughs> it's not productive at all. Uh, and what I remember about that for me personally, that it was draining to have to keep up with what somebody doing on social media, you know? So once I was able to let go of that situation, I felt so much better. I'm like, okay, like I can live my life now. But like when you're thinking about what they're doing and <sighs> Mickey Ficky, it's the worst. It is the worst. Um, is there any chance that ADHD can lower a person's libido? Uh, I have not seen any evidence that says that. You know, Maria, so, um, you know, when y'all ask questions, I always want to make sure that I'm coming from an evidence-based perspective. Uh, so to my knowledge, I don't know, but I'd love to look into it. The grass, uh, and, yeah, I agree. Grass ain't always greener. Um, Missy, ex ex exactly. Like, I've done that, I've done that whole thing where you, you break up with them and then you're like, ah, oh, I wonder if she still likes me. And then you're like, all right, you go back and then you, you get her again and y'all start dating again. And then you start to argue with the same thing that you were arguing about from like month one. And then you're like, oh, that's how we broke up, right? As if you as if you needed another reminder, right? Oh, she's definitely thinking about you. <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna say all that, you know, cause hey, maybe, maybe so. But like for me to worry about the next is like not not the most productive. Not the most productive. But Maria, that's a really good question. What I will say is that I do believe that with ADHD, there is, you know, the potential for the likelihood of having, you know, sexual dysfunction, right? Issues with, you know, maybe having a high sex drive or a low sex drive. I do believe that. And I've seen some uh, literature that suggests that. Uh, but for me to say that ADHD outright lowers sex drive, uh, I, I can't say that. Uh, I can't say that. Diane says it takes too long. <laughs> hey, respect, respect. Uh, Betty says uh, I'm ADHD with an overactive sex drive. I struggle with not jumping 
into a relationship too fast. The partner seems to be at the same level, but changes halfway in. Is there a way to lower your libido? Uh, I mean, yeah, there is. You know, sometimes a patient might come in and say, I have a super high sex drive, um, you know, and then they may also be depressed too. You know, I, I'm just making them snare, right? And then you give them an antidepressant, right? Which can affect your sex drive. But sometimes it can lower your sex drive. So sometimes if the uh, goal is to lower the sex drive and you give the patient an antidepressant and it brings it down, maybe that solves the, the issue for the patient, right? That's why the answer always comes back around to professional help. Like it's a very individualized thing, if that makes sense. Right. Oh, this is such a this is such a good topic, but I don't, I don't have that much time. But somebody dropped the magic word in. Let me read over a couple more questions, and then you know it's time for the water break. Uh, I'm into a lot of weird shit. <laughs> hey, Brett, it's gonna be a a, a a person out there for you. Uh, you know who's into what you're into. Respect. Um, is this? Talk sex with Sue? What, what Sue? I honestly use sex to calm my mind and be able to focus on what's going on at the moment. My libido is extremely high as well. My age being severe. Okay. Well, well, Cheyenne, hopefully you find a way to make it work for you. Right? And then I'm about to get to the cheers in a section. In a second, I see it. I have ADHD and I have this guy I've been talking to who also has ADHD. He's constantly demanding sexy videos for me because he needs constant simulation. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Uh, look, so I don't think I'm qualified to talk on the nature of anybody's relationship, right? If that's what works for y'all, if sending, you know, three sexy videos every week gets the job done for y'all, then hey. But if you're not okay with that, then hey, say, you know, I don't feel like, you know, taking an extended lunch break to go send you like a video, right? You know, just, you know, speak up for yourself, whether you're with it or whether you're, you're not with it. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Cheers, 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 cheers. Javon, I do appreciate you, my guy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your attention. Um, someone says, uh, don't do antidepressants. Uh, completely kill my sensation. So, so I'm, Lee, I'm, I'm just, I just gave a hypothetical situation, right? Um, but antidepressants have been known to lower sex drive, though. But it, yeah, my mouth was getting dry. Cheers, 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 cheers. Oh, make it picky. All right, I do have to get off, y'all. Get off, prepare for dinner, prepare for the rest of my day. Still got a couple emails and stuff to. Oh, the Celtics won. Uh, roof the, the, um, the nets but all right y'all so i have to get off uh but this is a really good discussion a really really good discussion and i'll be looking through some of the comments for more feedback uh, after the fact but i gotta get up i will see you all tomorrow peace take care love y'all